Okay, so before we look ahead to this year, I think we should quickly review the 17-18 Edmonton Oilers season. Now, I have given a lot of thought to how the Oilers are going to do in this upcoming season. I've followed the team very closely throughout training camp in the preseason. I've done a tremendous amount of research. I've consulted with other Oilers fans. And I can confidently say I have no clue how this season is going to play out. Just last weekend, we went back to my hometown because one of my good buddies was getting married. And my wife and I left our kids with my folks. And my mom dressed my daughter and son up, and they loved it. And when we were getting ready to come back home, my little girl said, Besta, make sure you leave all the toys right where we left them so we know where they are next time we come down. And my mother, Besta, said, okay, I'll try to. And my daughter looked at my mother, kind of skeptically, and said, because old people forget things, and I wouldn't want you to forget. See, as much as I know my daughter, and I'm a huge influence in her life, she's becoming her own person, and sometimes I have no idea what's going to come out of her mouth. That's how I feel about the Oilers this upcoming season. As much as I watch the games, and listen to the post-game interviews, and read coverage of the team, there are so many variables that could break either way this year. So what I'm going to do is just take a look at a few different aspects that I'm most intrigued by. The first one, and probably the most discussed to this point, is right wing. Everyone knew coming into the year that there was a serious lack of proven depth there. And then the preseason happened. And the Oilers got 17 goals from Raddy, Yamamoto, and Pugliarvi. Now, I know what everyone says. Oh, it's just the preseason. The games don't even mean anything. And they're absolutely right. I mean, the Oilers haven't finished below 500 in the preseason since 2008-09. And we all know how those seasons played out. But the main thing I take away from preseason is the ability to evaluate individual players who are trying to make an impression, not the team's win-loss record. And what I focus on is, do guys look confident? And have they worked on areas of their game that needed improvement from the year before? I'll start with Ty Ratty. I'll be perfectly honest, I was pretty skeptical about him. I know he'd put up quite a few points at the end of last year, but I didn't see him as a long-term fit with McDavid. But throughout the preseason, he has done nothing but impress. He's not afraid to shoot the puck, and he gets his shot off quickly. What was especially encouraging is that he scored a few of his goals away from McDavid. Raddy is in a very unique situation in that this is probably his last shot at staying in the NHL, and he's also got the best job in hockey at least from a player's perspective. I could see him scoring anywhere from 15 to 35 goals this season. With Yamamoto, the one thing that has really stood out is his willingness to go to the net and his tenacity when he gets there. 
He reminds me a lot of Tyler Johnson, which makes a lot of sense since the two have trained together and Yamamoto models his game after him. Kyler is the biggest wild card on the right wing in my opinion. I could see him playing only half the season with the big club or just tearing it up and challenging for the Calder Trophy. And last, but certainly not least, is Jesse Pugliarvi. I know I butcher his name all the time, so I usually just refer to him as JP. Although my buddy Corey calls him Snot Boy, which is also a very fitting nickname. Last year he showed some improvement over the previous season, and I was actually at the game in January against Vancouver where he was playing on a line with Dreisaitl and had a goal and two assists, and I thought, they got something here. Then he faded a bit down the stretch and looked a bit lost at times. Well, he showed up to training camp this year and he looks like a completely different player. His skating looks more fluid, he's way more confident, you can tell he's not hesitant about the plays he's making. And most notably, I think he may have come to the realization over the summer that he's a pretty big boy. There's no reason he can't be going out there and saying, get out of my way, I'm taking the puck to the net. I am confident in saying this guy's going to score at least 20 goals this year, whether or not he gets bumped up to Dreisaitl's wing on the second line or not. Speaking of Dreisaitl, he is not getting enough love around the league. Over the course of the last two seasons, there are four centers with more even strength points than him. McDavid, Crosby, Malkin, and Shifley. All four of those guys are ranked in the top 11 players of TSN's top 50. Leon's not even on the list. I'm telling you, people are sleeping on this guy because he makes too much money right now, he was concussed last year, and the Oilers' horrendous power play skewed his numbers. If he is healthy this year, he will have a monster season. That is the one thing I am sure of when it comes to the 2019 Oilers. The second thing I want to examine is the defense. Last year we saw what happened when the Oilers' top three defensemen all struggled through injuries and off-ice issues. Now, all Shirelli did was add old man Garrison and teenager Evan Bouchard to the mix. So, he's counting on Clefbaum, Larson, and Sekera bouncing back. Sekera is already out for months, and Larson seems to have tweaked his back in the preseason. If something happens to Clefbaum, we may be writing the eulogy for this season at the end of October. Now, the Oilers actually have a pretty decent blue line, but they need these guys to stay healthy if they want to have success this season, and if they want to properly develop Evan Bouchard. Bouchard led the league with a plus nine in the preseason, and he moved the puck beautifully. He will probably crack 50 assists at some point in his career feeding Connor the puck in full flight for 82 games. But it is vitally important that the Oilers are in a position to either give him just a nine game trial or shelter him on the third pairing throughout the year. Darnell Nurse is the other wild card here because if he breaks out with a 35 point season, the Oilers and the fan base will be thrilled, but it's going to complicate their salary cap situation even more when his bridge deal is done. There's a lot of moving parts there. How is it going to play out? No idea. And the final thing I want to touch on is Mikko Koskinen. I would really love to sit down with Peter Shirelli and ask him... Just... What were you thinking? The Oilers inexplicably paid this guy two and a half million bucks to come over from the KHL to play maybe 25 games? Is there any other goalie in the league that's making a hundred grand per start? I only saw him play in a few preseason games and he didn't look great. The main concern I have is that he's a big goaltender and yet a lot of these shots are going right into the middle of the net. Granted, he did get better as the games went on, but that's still not enough to justify the amount of money they're paying him and the no movement clause Shirelli gave him. It looks even worse, if that's even possible, that cheap guys like Picard and McElhaney were just picked up on the waiver wire. Again, I really don't know how this year is going to go. But I will say this, if the Oilers are going to have any success this year, they absolutely must 
get through their first 10 games with at least 10 points. And I'm not just saying that because I have a friendly bet riding on it. It's because it's a killer schedule, both opponent-wise and travel-wise, and they need to get their confidence back after what happened last year if they're going to be a competitive team. There is one more thing that I would like to add before I go. Some of you may know that my Uncle Neil passed away back in February. I had mentioned him on this blog a couple of years ago. He was a big Oilers fan, and I miss texting back and forth with him during the games. So I just want to dedicate this season of Oilers blogs to his memory.